All right, chapter four is called Harry Cat, but it's Harry, H-A-R-R-Y, like the name, not Harry, H-A-R-Y, like the hair on your head. Chester buried his head in the Kleenex. He didn't want to see his new friend, Tucker Mouse, get killed. Back in Connecticut, he had sometimes watched the one-sided fights of cats and mice in the meadow, and unless the mice were near their holes, the fights always ended in the same way. But this cat had been upon them too quickly. Tucker couldn't have escaped. There wasn't a sound. Chester lifted his head and very cautiously looked behind him. The cat, a huge tiger cat with gray-green eyes and black stripes along his body, was sitting on his hind legs, switching his tail around his forepaws. And directly between those forepaws and the very jaws of his enemy sat Tucker Mouse. He was watching Chester curiously. The cricket began to make frantic signs that the mouse should look up and see what was looming over him. Very casually, Tucker raised his head. The cat looked straight down on him. Oh, him, said Tucker, chucking the cat under the chin with his right front paw. He's my best friend. Come out from the matchbox. Chester crept out, looking first at one, then the other. Chester, meet Harry Cat, said Tucker. Harry, this is Chester. He's a cricket. I'm very pleased to make your acquaintance, said Harry Cat in a silky voice. Hello, said Chester. He was sort of ashamed because of all the fuss he'd made. I wasn't scared for myself, but I thought cats and mice were enemies. In the country, maybe, said Tucker, but in New York, we gave up those old habits long ago. Harry's my oldest friend. He lives with me over in the drain pipe. So how was scrounging tonight, Harry? Mm, not so good, said Harry Cat. I was over in the ash cans on the east side, but those rich people don't know to throw out as much garbage as they should. Chester, make that noise again for Harry, said Tucker Mouse. Chester lifted the black wings that were carefully folded across his back and with a quick expert stroke, drew the top one over the bottom. A thrum echoed through the station. Lovely, very lovely, said the cat. This cricket has talent. I thought it was singing, said Tucker, but you do it like playing a violin with one wing on the other. Yes, said Chester. These wings aren't much good for flying, but I prefer music anyhow. He made three rapid chirps. Tucker Mouse and Harry Cat smiled at each other. It makes me want to purr to hear it, said Harry. Some people say a cricket goes chee. And others say, treat, treat, treat. But we crickets, we don't think it sounds like either one of those. It sounds to me as if you were going, crick, 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 said Harry. Mm, maybe that's why they call him a cricket, said Tucker. They all laughed. Tucker had a squeaky laugh that sounded as if he were hiccuping. Chester was feeling much happier now. The future did not seem as nearly as gloomy as it had over in the pile of dirt in the corner. Are you going to stay a while in New York? asked Tucker. I guess I'll have to, said Chester. I don't know how to get home. Well, we could always take you to Grand Central Station and put you on a train going back to Connecticut, said Tucker. But why don't you give the city a try? Meet new people, see new things. Mario likes you very much. Yes, but his mother doesn't, said Chester. She thinks I carry germs. Germs, said Tucker scornfully. She wouldn't know a germ if it one gave her a black eye. Pay no attention. Too bad you couldn't have found more successful friends, said Harry Cat. I fear for the future of this new stand. It's true, echoed Tucker sadly. They're going broke fast. He jumped on a pile of magazines and read off the names in the half light that slanted through the cracks in the wooden cover. Art News, Musical America. Who would read them but a few long hairs? I don't understand the way you talk, said Chester. Back in the meadow, he had listened to bullfrogs and woodchucks and rabbits, even a few snakes, but he had never heard anyone speak like Tucker Mouse. What is a long hair? Tucker scratched his head and thought a moment. A long hair is a extra refined person, he said. 
You take an Afghan hound. That's a long hair. Do Afghan hounds read musical America? Asked the cricket. Well, they would if they could, said Tucker. Chester shook his head. I'm afraid I won't get along in New York, he said. Oh, sure you will, squeaked Tucker Mouse. Harry, suppose we take Chester up and show him Times Square. Would you like that, Chester? I guess so, said Chester, although he was really a little leery of venturing out into New York City. The three of them jumped down to the floor. The crack in the side of the newsstand was just wide enough for Harry to get through. As they crossed the station floor, Tucker pointed out the local sites of interest, such as the Nedix lunch counter. Tucker spent a lot of time around there and the Lofts candy store, and then they came to the drain pipe. Chester had to make short little hops to keep from hitting his head as they went up. There seemed to be hundreds of twistings and turnings and many other pipes that opened off the main route. But Tucker Mouse knew his way perfectly, even in the dark. At last, Chester saw light above them. One more hop brought him out onto the sidewalk and there he gasped, holding his breath and crouching against the cement. They were standing at one corner of the Times building, which is at the south end of Times Square. Above the cr cricket, towers that seemed like mountains of light rose up into the night sky. Even this late, the neon signs were still blazing. Reds, blues, greens, and yellows flashed down on him, and the air was full of the roar of traffic and the hum of human beings. It was as if Times Square were a kind of shell with colors and noises breaking in great waves inside it. Chester's heart hurt him and he closed his eyes. The sight was too terrible and beautiful for a cricket who up to now had measured high things by the height of his willow tree and sounds by the burble of a running brook. How do you like it? asked Tucker Mouse. Well, it's, it's quite something, Chester stuttered. You should see it New Year's Eve, said Harry Cat. Gradually, Chester's eyes got used to the lights. He looked up, and way far above them, above New York and above the whole world, he made out a star that he knew was a star he used to look at back in Connecticut. When they had gone down to the station and Chester was in the matchbox again, he thought about that star. It made him feel better to think that there was one familiar thing twinkling above him amid so much that was new and strange. Let's see if you can see the star. See it up there. See them. There they are. That's the end of the chapter. If you've been to Times Square, I haven't. I'm sure you could imagine what they were feeling, but maybe not because you're not a cat and a mouse or a cricket. <laughs> All right. See you later for the next chapter.